So I'm gonna be talking about connecting with your ancestors, how to connect with your ancestors, who your ancestors are. Because what I'm noticing in the spiritual community is um, that a lot of people are consciously connecting with their ancestors and um, for a lot of people, this is actually how they're coming into greater spirituality through this understanding uh, that they can consciously connect with their ancestors. However, I want to start off with helping you understand how things work in terms of the astral plane and we'll just call it the afterlife, right? If you are connecting to your ancestors who are in the astral plane, meaning they haven't crossed over, every ancestor is not necessarily uh, of the highest light or of the highest vibration. Okay, um, you guys might recall, I don't know if it was earlier this week or last week, but we did a channeling with the angelic realm around money and thousands of your ancestors were present who needed help being crossed over. Okay, because if a soul is like an earthbound spirit and they're still hanging out in the astral and they're still attached to this realm, it is because something has not been resolved, something has not been reconciled, they are still attached uh, perhaps to something that happened in the, in the lifetime or some type of trauma or something like that. So when people are connecting to their ancestors, right, the, the souls who are attached to the, the lineage, who are still hanging out in the astral, um, you wanna make sure that those souls are of the highest light and vibration, okay? All ancestors are not here cheering you on. And uh, the reason why we had to cross over thousands of ancestors was, was because some of them did not want you to ascend based on the lifetime that they had, based on experiences that they had, or just, you know, they were still operating from a, a third dimensional perspective, um, even though they're, hanging out in the 4d astral right so connecting with your ancestors who have crossed over is different right these are the ancestors who have ascended who have gone to the other side so to speak and from that that consciousness of neutrality they can support you right so let's say um you want to connect with your ancestors because you truly want to understand the programs that are in your dna or that have been uh running through your lineage and because they you know were a part of that bloodline and had those experiences it is something that they can help you learn from it is something that they can help you grow through those are the ancestors that you want to be calling in and connecting with so Something that you can say is, I'm, and you can do this, you can do everything through your higher self, which is source, right? That's, that's how you're going to get the purest, highest light energy, whatever you want to work with. You can also do this through the angelic realm, but something very simple. Calling in my higher self to connect me to my ancestors of the highest light, um, who have fully ascended, who would like to step forward and assist me with X, Y, Z. So if, okay, so the angelic realm wanted me to talk about this as well because there's another thing happening in the spiritual community where, uh, you know, people are making that connection through their ancestry, but they are still operating in a frequency of separation. Meaning if, if I'm calling in my ancestors and my ancestors are telling me, hey, you know, we're superior to this race, or uh, those colonizers or those people, you know, just different things that are coming up, right? Those ancestors of yours who are still earthbound, hanging out in the astral for various reasons, um, they are not working in the highest light, okay? So you want to energetically protect yourself because when you're connecting to all these different beings and you don't know who you're connecting with, um, they're keeping you operating in a low vibrational frequency and still attached to 3D concepts, right? When you are truly communicating with an ancestor who has ascended, who has fully crossed over, they're going to operate in neutrality and total love light for, for everything and everyone because you got to understand this ancestor that you're connecting with, um, like if they have fully crossed over and ascended, 
they're not thinking from their human identity, right? They're not thinking from separation. They're not thinking from, well, in that lifetime, I was this type of race and I'm still attached to that. They're not attached to it at all. So, and this, this goes with any spirit guide, right? Not just your ancestors. You can tell uh, the frequency you're connecting with by if they're operating in total love, unity, consciousness. Those are the guides who are truly going to give you information that allows you to open your heart and ascend through this plane of existence, okay? So again, if you're connecting with ancestors and they're, they're, they're giving you information that's rooted in polarity or separation, they haven't fully crossed over, they haven't fully ascended, and you can help them. You can help them ascend, you can help them cross over. You can call in your angelic team of light, your high council of light and say, hey, if there are any ancestors in my lineage who are still hanging out in the astral that are stopping me from healing the programs in our lineage who are attached to me or anybody in my family for whatever reason, let's you know call in a pillar of light and let's assist them with crossing over. So um, what the angelic realm is dropping through me right now is this is a part of why a lot of lineages are stuck in the same karmic patterns. Because you do have, you know, these people in the astral attached to the bloodline who um, are still upset about some of the things that they experienced, right? About some of the things that may have transpired in their lifetime due to their race or ethnicity or even gender and different things like that, or class or status is what they're giving me. So when you're connecting with your ancestors, make sure you're connecting with the fully ascended version of these beings, okay? Um, any, any guide giving you information that's rooted in fear or separation or pain or envy or disempowerment or what they're even bringing through is victimization right if, if you're connecting with an ancestor and it's like you know we're vi you are a victim of this okay that is not a being who has fully ascended and crossed over they're not going to give you uh information that vibrates in that realm of frequency okay very 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 important as like I said, many people are having their spiritual awakenings through connecting with ancestors, okay? So you want to be someone who is aware of this, uh, this bigger picture that is rooted in light and love. And you guys can let me know if this is helping you, if you've had some questions uh, surrounding this. There are some real divisive pages with big accounts that always talk about the revenge of the ancestors. Exactly. Thank you for bringing that through. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Right? Like I said, um, creating this separation, you know, colonizers are saying Caucasian people don't have ancestors. I've seen a lot of different things. Um, and again, we're speaking on this because at this time, it's extremely important for the collective to raise their vibrational frequencies and operate in unity consciousness. The more you vibrate in hate, the more you vibrate in separation, the more you vibrate in victimization, right? You are binding yourself um, to these third dimensional timelines, which we're all trying to get the collective to ascend out of. Um, and again, I know these conversations can be difficult as many of our ancestors have experienced a lot of pain right a lot of suffering a lot of hurt there has been colonization there has been capitalism and, and uh you know stripping of heritage and traditions and uh cultural identity that has taken place but your job is not to perpetuate um the pain and the suffering of those experiences your job is to recognize the full picture and transmute these things back into love. That's actually how you are going to heal your own DNA. So as you're healing this within your own consciousness, it heals the DNA. But when you're perpetuating the same uh, thoughts, the same vibration, the same, you know, just that same cycle, you are not helping. You are, um, you're continuing to carry those programs and pass them down through your lineage, right? You get to say, hey, this stops with me. I honor, I respect, and I understand everything that has taken place prior to me being here. And you can totally honor your ancestors, but it has to be from a place of empowerment. 
Um, and even for me, I struggled with connecting with my ancestors for a long time because I could feel that there was heavy, um, just a very heavy density. And me as a starseed, not like really being from this planet, um, that vibration for me, I knew I was going to have to like work through a lot. So it, it wasn't necessarily like my way, so to speak, of connecting. Um, as I've learned how to heal these programs within myself, help the ones cross over who were still hanging on to pain, I've been able to establish a deeper connection with my ancestors and really feel the love and the support um, that they have for me. So thank you for that comment. That was great. This is great. This is such good info, especially for those who have ancestors that have experienced slavery. Absolutely. Um, about, I think this was sometime last year, I did a really, really big clearing of my lineage. And this, I mean, there were Africans, there were Indians, there were, there were Caucasians, there were like so many different types of, uh, I think we were, we were focus, focusing on the divine feminine within my lineage different types of women in my lineage going back like going so 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 far back like we went back thousands of years and the pain that they were carrying the just they had been stripped of their integrity they they had been so broken and beaten and heartbroken and that's when I consciously realized why I was uh, separating myself from connecting with them, right? So if you've been feeling like you're struggling to connect with your ancestors because you are expanding into like more galactic information or that type of thing, um, it's likely because there is a clearing of your lineage that, that needs to take place. And typically it's, it's, it's really big. It, it will be a really, really um, deep, process just because there are so many souls and so many horrendous things that happen truly you know ways that our ancestors may have died if it was brutal if it you know so just imagine all of these souls hanging out in the astral who can't process what happened to them and they're still attached to your bloodline so this is like a really important conversation how can you tell if an ancestor has attached to you? So this is a great question. Um, what the angelic realm is showing me is if you are, if you're holding on to deep pain as if, and as a black woman, I resonate with this. Um, uh, they're giving me like this feeling of anger, this feeling of being very upset with the world, feeling victimized by the world, you know, because of the lineage that you were born into these feelings of just anger right that anger when you're born um free and pure that doesn't come from you you just got back from source you know what i mean that that's not coming from you you've inherited that through the bloodline and then again these souls in the astral they just kind of like amplify that energy um, because perhaps someone mentioned like revenge of the ancestors. That's something that would be coming from a soul who has not fully gone into the light. So if you're feeling that angry energy, and again, there's nothing wrong with that, guys. It's a, it's a part of our healing journey. It's a part of our process as a black person. I grew up in my home, you know truly being taught to believe that I was constantly going to be in this fight. I was constantly going to be in this suffering. I was constantly going to be in this cycle of struggle and proving myself as a person of color in America. And as I started to awaken, one of the first things that had to go was that identity, right? That identity of being the victim, of, of being the person that came from slaves who will only ever accomplish X, Y, Z. Um, and a lot of ancestors will be pissed off. The ones who haven't crossed over, they will be pissed off. Um, because again, they're operating still from 
a limited awareness and consciousness. So they don't want you to ascend. They don't want you to ascend because they are thinking in terms of, well, I am being left behind or we did not get revenge or, you know, we did not, you know, they need to go to the light to fully understand that it was a part of a contractual agreement of them signing up to have that experience. Okay. Um, so you will recognize if, an ancestor is attached to you through you still harboring these deep feelings of victimization and pain and hate. And I literally remember this like it was yesterday, a very profound moment in my life where in an instant, it just clicked. And I said, I said this out loud, I never lived that pain. I never um, lived that pain, but I had been holding on to that pain as if it were mine based on what was coming from my family, you know, society, societal programming. Um, and for those of you who are also, you know, people of color from the spec, like, especially as a black person from the time you are like in preschool, right? You're shown movies of slavery and this struggle and this pain and all this suffering, okay? That just unlocks more of that trauma from your DNA. It truly becomes an identity. And again, I am not, um, what the angelic realm is saying is we are not discounting those experiences, right? Those experiences are valid. We're just simply saying you will reach a point on your ascension journey where you have to uh, let certain things go to fully free yourself that you have to forgive um, those experiences um, you you have to you have to forgive things that have happened to free yourself which ultimately will free your lineage so let me see I got kind of lost I think someone asked something What does clearing out your lineage mean? Mean So, okay, for those of you who just joined, we're talking about the difference between ancestors who are earthbound spirits, meaning they're still hanging out in the astral plane, and ancestors who are ascended and have fully crossed over, right? And so when you have ancestors who have not fully crossed over and they're still operating in certain matrix frequencies, okay, it, they can still be operating in lack and separation and scarcity and revenge and disempowerment, those types of things. So you would want to work with a healer or someone, if you can't do this yourself, who can help you, um, some of these ancestors cross over, you know, we can do this right now. The angelic room is saying, so I'm just going to call in a full sweeping of the lineages that we are able to clear right now. Okay. We're going to call in the Sophia dragons. Cause this is pretty deep as many of our ancestors have experienced lots and lots and lots of pain and have just been relive reliving these in the astral really just trapped and stuck. So, Okay, we're going to call in some Sophia Dragons. Really, really intense energy. You will be uh, feeling this. They're saying release from yourself. And I'm just calling it thousands and thousands and thousands of angels, thousands of angels, zero point angels, um, helping helping these souls to clear and detach from your lineage. It is time for you to go. We're saying, and what they're mentioning, guys, is this is happening because of you. Because all of this that has been happening for thousands of years is ending with you. Some of these people have been stuck here for thousands of years. I'm seeing Victorian ages. I'm seeing uh, there are just e Egypt, uh, the Mayan era. Like there's just like a lot of uh, energy here. And there's just this, if, if some of you are clairvoyant, you could see this 
huge tornado of energy and we are just moving them all up this fifth dimensional tube of light to be transmuted and in, back into their highest form of light you might feel some celebration some of them have been waiting for this we're just speaking them to speaking to them on a soul level understanding why it is time to go into the light some of them do not feel worthy to go into the light if they were the ones also doing horrendous things it's okay come 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 and the angelic realms are just creating this huge sweeping, this clearing um, of all of our lineages, helping them to release, helping them to forgive, helping them to move on, which will allow you to fully move on. Wow, I'm really feeling them and in my solar plexus. Yes, so the, the cords uh, in which they might be attaching to you um, are typically usually anchored through different chakras, right? The solar plexus, really like these lower three chakras is where attached ancestors like to hang out, where those energies um, are sort of like coded within your energetic grid system. So there is just a further clearing of this happening, releasing from you, from your chakra system, releasing, 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 releasing from the cells, from the DNA. Beautiful, amazing, awesome. I feel lighter too, like, yeah, I feel lighter as well. My chest is hurting, but not as heavy. So this last concept uh, that the angelic realm is bringing through is you are your own person, okay? You are your own person. You are having your own experience. You are not your ancestors. You're not your ancestors. The pain that they experienced, okay, that no longer needs to be a part of the story because the story you keep telling is what's creating the reality, right? Well, I come from this family, this identity, this background. We only ever experienced this. We only were able to have this. We only ever were able to do these things. Now, that can fuel you. That can empower you to be the one to liberate your lineage. However, it can no longer... Some are still angry here, so the angelic realm is just moving some of this energy. It no longer has to be an identity that you are attached to okay it, it doesn't it, it it's not who you are you are a soul you are an infinite light you are here to be an amazing creator and we're releasing these so they can allow you to be that some of them have not been allowing you to be that and to do that if i'm connecting with my ancestors i'm going to become an alcoholic <laughs> It feels like the air surrounding me and my body got clearer and lighter. Yes, yes, we are moving those all. There's just a continual sweeping happening because um, there's a ton of energy. But the main point that the angelic realm is making is you are here to birth a new path and to blaze a new trail. Think of yourself, they're saying, as a guardian of the lineage. That when your great, great, great grandchildren who are going to be like super psychic and ascended, right, um, are looking back on this, they're going to go, oh, that's my grandmother or grandfather who neutralized the vibration of our bloodline and started this new timeline, right? It's a new timeline. This is what new earth feels like and what it looks like and where it vibrates. It's all of the bloodlines being healed being alchemized and being revitalized for ascension. Your, our ancestors have not been able to ascend because the vibrational frequency has been too low. I want you to see uh, DNA as like a light bulb. A light bulb can only shine as bright as the wattage will allow. So if the DNA is not unlocked and it's carrying all of these programs and this pain, this trauma, this conditioning, you cannot pull in your higher multi-dimensional high frequency consciousness because the DNA literally cannot hold that much light. 
So when we're having these conversations, we're allowing you to unlock um, dormant DNA that would allow you to start vibrating in a higher capacity. So this is something interesting um, that they want me to talk about. They keep bringing it up. So I'm just going to talk about it. I was like, I don't know if I want to talk about that. But um, they're talking about racism. And they're talking about the, the origins of racism started with classism. Uh, and this classism was actually a separation of DNA because DNA has a vibration. So what started to happen with certain elites, so they're taking me back to like the, the royal families, the royal bloodlines, like why there was like all this interbreeding and uh, incest was because they had the belief that we need to keep the high vibrational DNA in our lineage. If we start mi mixing with the peasants or the lower class people, right, knowing that uh, these, these people were experiencing lack and poverty and those types of things, if we mingle with them, it's going to lower the vibrational DNA. And if the DNA is vibrating at a slower frequency, that impacts our ability to manifest. So um, they're showing me this is all wrapped up with like the reptilians behind this, elitism, royal families and bloodlines, um, and black magic. It's all wrapped up, right? And I always tell you guys, black, mal black magic is just simply using universal laws against people, using them in a reverse way where either you're getting someone to create a reality that doesn't benefit them, or in this case of the DNA, it literally has been, uh, let's, let's have the masses vibrate at this level of DNA. And you know, we're going to maintain this higher frequency DNA, if you will. So um, things get very interesting when we peel back the layers to what, you know, these dark beings along with the Archon Network, what you might know as demons, um, what they do. They just create chaos and they do it on every plane of existence. So they do it on the physical level with food, water, education, religion, all those different things. But then they also do it on a, on a spiritual energetic level with your consciousness, with your thoughts, with your beliefs, with your DNA. So when we free ourselves and we heal ourselves, we go, okay, I am no longer playing those games with you. And again, this is nothing for you guys to be afraid of. It, it really isn't. Because when you reclaim your multidimensional consciousness, you're no longer a part of those realities. But this is this is why they're so committed and dedicated to also holding your ancestors in the astral plane and convincing, convincing them that they shouldn't cross over and all types of weird things that happen because it keeps people trapped in the same 3D matrix timelines of awareness. But that's all shifting and changing and healing and you get to be a part of it which is beautiful and let me just see so i'm not afraid i'm just pissed off so if you are i don't know if i'm interpreting correctly if this is what you mean however if you find yourself being pissed off, and I know I'm just going to say specifically for a lot of people of color. Ooh, sorry, clearing some energy. Um, this is where it can be really difficult for you to start reclaiming your, I'll just say your Christ consciousness because of pain and traumas and certain things that have happened um, that you it's very hard for you to see the bigger picture and, and operate in forgiveness and, and to understand that everything has been contractual. Furthermore, they want me to expand on this with contracts. Whatever you do here, your soul has to balance out that karma. So they're giving me this example of, let's say someone was a slave owner, like a really brutal slave owner. Um, what usually happens is they come back as the race, the ethnicity, whatever of, of, of the people that they were oppressing. So many people of color during these times, 
Um, I'm not going to say all of them, but they're just showing me a lot of them are souls balancing out the karma of like what they did when they were here. If they were running a slave trade or if they were perpetuating, perpetuating racism and hate and things like that. Right. From the perspective of the soul, the soul knows that it is everything. So once it leaves the physical encasement and incarnation, it goes, oh, OK, you know. And again, there's no judgment. On the other side, we laugh about these things. We joke it like it's not a, a serious thing, per se, they're saying. And they just go, oh, shit, fuck, I got to go balance out that karma, you know, and that that's what happens. So when you start seeing things like this. And you're no longer in this separation, black, white, brown, Asian, whatever, this is superiority, okay? Those are deeply embedded matrix programs, cultivated, architected, and created by, we're just going to give it to the reptilians with this one, they're saying, okay? That's their whole thing. How do we pit people against each other? How do we keep the chaos going? How do we keep them in a frequency of hate and being pissed off at each other? Because if we keep them in that energy, that's just fuel for us. And it just keeps fueling the matrix timelines. They love it when you're pissed. They love it when you're angry. They love it when you are, you know, going all oh, those colonizers or oh, you, they love that. That's what they want you to do. It's literally, uh, they're giving me the word harvest. They are harvesting your energy. But when you take that step back and you start operating as an ascended being and you only have love in your heart for all of the experiences uh, that have been happening here and you're no longer, it's me against them or them against us or us, you know, all of that. Now you can free up all of this space within your vessel to create the realities that you desire. This is why the ancestral healing part is the most difficult part. Because again, it's, it's very, very heavy. It's thousands of years of everything that anyone in your bloodline has ever experienced just hanging out in your DNA. Um, so you have to be mindful. Okay, you, you have to be mindful of these things. Uh, okay, I'm pissed off at demons who kept us all down. So I've had this type of conversation many of times. I'm not sure, uh, many of times, I'm not sure if you guys have been present. So let me just explain this. There, I'm not going to say, uh, so what the angelic realm is saying is, it's not that duality has to exist. It's just that it exists in this dimension, right? The purpose of this dimension. So duality is not an absolute truth of reality. When we start moving into other dimensions, we call these, um, they always have me call them like pleasure-based realities because they, or dimensions and even multiverses, they literally feel like total ecstasy. Like so much ecstasy that, you would be like a walking orgasm. You wouldn't even be able to, to really be here. Some of these energies, you know, they're not really meant for you to experience in continuation in these, um, in these types of existences. So when you start honoring that duality is playing a very, very important role in this dimension, you're not hanging on to that energy of hate or hanging on to that energy of being pissed off, right? They are playing a role which is, they're saying, where do you think the term fallen angel comes from? It is a being who has agreed to lower their vibrational awareness, forget the origins of who they are, to sort of do the darker things, the darker deeds, because it allows the journey of the soul to expand or to, they're kind of giving me like, um, we create dragons just so we can slay them. Meaning we, duality allows us to create these perceived challenges and so we can have the triumph. You won't have an experience of a triumph if there was no challenge. And that is what these beings do. So when you recognize who they are, oh, they're just angels. They hate that. They absolutely hate 
when you have love in your in 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 your heart for them because they can't stand the frequency. So what happens? They don't even want to deal with you. They don't want to be bothered with you. They don't want to be in your presence. It, they literally cannot withstand or stand the light. This is why I tell people I never get psychically attacked. It, it never happens. I, and I do. I've done. Um, what do you call them? Exorcisms. I do exorcisms. I do a lot of things that you would consider to be dark, but I'm never attacked because I understand the functionality of these beings. I'm not upset with them. I'm totally neutral. And I keep telling you guys, neutrality is, is the frequency of unconditional love. Neutrality is like, oh, I could care less about this. Neutrality is I'm neutral because I understand that everything is valid within source. And because it is valid, I am approaching it through a lens of love. So love is your greatest form of protection, is your greatest weapon, so to speak. So um, if you're feeling angry about some of the things that have been happening on Earth for thousands of years, don't feel angry. Earth is a school. When souls come here, they fully know um, what's going to go down, what it's all about. And they go, wow, that's... I like the contrast of that. I know it might be hard when I'm like actually in the experience, but I just like, I like the thought of expanding from some of those, uh, those lower realities. Now what happens is the soul will reach a point where it goes, okay, I have experienced that enough. I have played those games enough. I am ready to ascend in terms of the types of, realities I will start incarnating into they will be more ascended that's exactly what's happening on earth all of the earth souls higher selves said okay it's time for us to elevate our game it's time for us to ascend it's time for us to um evolve our consciousness so we can uh expand the human the human uh, reality, okay? So that's all it is. It's a school that has allowed certain lessons to be learned and in order for that to happen, certain beings have to play a certain low vibrational role. Hold love in your heart and you will transcend the entire experience. This is why most of our race is stuck in old timelines because we are focused on the pain and the hurt. Yes, and that goes for many, many different races and ethnicities. Um, and they're really giving me beyond race because, you know, that's just a construct. It's a human issue. As much as we like to think that certain races are experiencing more pain than other races, they're saying everybody's experiencing pain because pain and suffering comes from not remembering who you are. Even if someone, let's say someone is like the biggest racist on the planet, they're saying that person is experiencing the same amount of pain, if not more than the people that they're inflicting this vibration on because they're in such a deep separation from who they are as love and light. And remember, when they were born, they weren't born racist. Nobody comes out the womb racist. That came from their lineage. That came from their ancestors. That came from whoever programmed that into them. So when you are in this neutrality, you are no longer a victim. And you also understand that everyone, no matter what they look like, has experienced suffering based on the programs um, in, within the matrix. And then you stop believing that someone's doing something to you or if you are coming from this this belief that you're more superior than other people, you know, all of these different beliefs, they are matrix, uh, they're just born out of matrix frequencies. Um, let's see. I'm just getting caught up guys, give me a second. I love this question. So what is love exactly? Not in the way that we think of it as a human emotion. What is it on a universal level? This is important. On a universal level, love is simply the acceptance of all. This is why I said 
neutrality is the frequency of unconditional love because pure total neutrality is I accept everything as being a part of source's awareness. So in source having this experience of self, source allowed all of these zillions of, of fractals of what we call souls to have free will for the purpose of truly allowing them to venture out and experience different levels of awareness. But as we're experiencing different levels of awareness, the, the data, so to speak, uh, it is that feedback is being provided back to source because source just wants to understand who and what it is on every level, every possibility, every um, potentiality of what it is and what it could be. So even when there are things that are dark happening, it still gives feedback to source on what it is not. How, if you were in a room of just pure light, how would you know that you are the light? This is why source has created this reference point outside of itself, which we like to call darkness or contrast or duality, because I can truly know myself as the light and I want you guys to sit with this. It's a little bit more of an advanced concept, but they're just saying you're ready for it. When I truly understand that I am the light, that I am unconditional love, that I am endless beauty, and I am infinite intelligence, and I am everything magical and miraculous that you could possibly fathom, when I truly experience that through an I am awareness, do you understand the gift that darkness brings? With this polarity, you get to recognize yourself for what you really are. Again, if there was only light in the room and you're blinded by light, how do you experience yourself as the light, right? You have to have you know, this polar frequency. So lower vibrational realities, that is the functionality that they play for source. That is the role of lower vibrational experiences like that which has been occurring on earth. But for the higher realms, right? The pleasure realms, I told you guys about the absolute realms, the ecstasy realms, where they don't experience any duality or contrast, they hold dear and sacred these realities, understanding the full picture of, of, of how it's helping all of creation, the feedback that it's giving source. So when source became aware of itself, those two words, I am, right? Wow, I am. It awakened to its own existence. It had all, always existed, but it became conscious. That's why we call it consciousness. Source became consciously aware of, it, of its existence. After I am, next came, well, who am I? What am I? What do I have the, the potential to be? I can feel that I am infinity, that I am endless, but what does that really mean? What does that really look like? Okay. And then the birthing of this experience for you to experience yourself as a separate self while still being within the consciousness of source. That is the point. That is the reason. So I hope, is all of this making sense? Some of the most beautiful things come from the darkness, I feel. 1,000%. They're saying, think about on Earth. So, okay, uh, this is, the Arcturians are coming in, my galactic star family. They're talking about, um, think about how many, or they're saying, you guys, because you're on Earth, you, yeah, not think about it, but they're explaining it from their perspective. There are so many things on earth that you have that we don't have. There are so many things that we create here because of the contrast that they don't have the same capacity to create because what they're showing me is the darker you go, meaning the, the lower the vibration, you got to remember there's a polarity to that. So as dark as it gets, that means the light is even more. That's why thousands of galactic races are so interested in what's happening on Earth. 
Because as humans start to unlock their awareness and their consciousness, the love that is going to be experienced when they come back into source, when they come back into totality, is going to be mind-blowing. Is going to be beyond what has ever been experienced. If, if you've forgotten who you are and you are experiencing the darkest of the darkest of the darkest of the darkest, and then you come back into this full remembrance that you are source, guys, it's total ecstasy. And I'm as someone who has experienced it, who has died, um, like twice I've died, but they, yeah, they were able to put me back on a timeline, so I'm here. Um, but because the ecstasy is so much that the human body actually can't handle it. You might, your physical body will have a heart attack or like, it's crazy. So in experiencing total ecstasy, love, light, consciousness, and going from being totally in the dark to who you are and then coming back into source, that's what all of humanity is in store for. And, and they're showing me humanity is going to become a very masterful uh, race of, of galactic beings. A very powerful race that's going to help the same way we look at the Arcturians, um, you know, as these benevolent elders. They're saying humans are going to become that because of the, the density that has been experienced here has been allowed to get to such a low point right so absolutely there is tremendous beauty in darkness and when you see that you can see that in the moment you will transcend and alchemize everything you experience because you won't be seeing it as something that's holding you down and holding you back it's just something they're saying like you know iron sharpens iron so it, it gets to be a beautiful thing so I think uh, we are pretty complete. Let me just tune in with the angelics and see if there was anything else. They're just saying to go forward knowing that everything happening here is for your highest evolution and expansion. Nothing happening here is truly um, holding you back. Nothing happening here can ever threaten the truth of your soul. Nothing happening here can ever stop you from being the eternal being of love and light that you are. And the more you start living like that on a day-to-day -day basis, you will feel yourself just being so free, so grateful, so, so abundant, so in love, so happy. It doesn't matter what chaos is happening in the world. You understand the benefit of it. You understand the purpose of it. You understand the expansion of it. So in that way, you are no longer a part, you know, of perpetuating the density. So thank you guys so much. Have a beautiful rest of your Saturday um, and much love to everybody.